Good morning and welcome to our 10.30 service here at Highfield Church. We are so glad that you're joining us wherever you're watching us and whenever you're tuning in. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Just before we get going, a few notices. The first thing obviously is to say a very happy new year and we hope that you are celebrating and enjoying what lies ahead. Probably the most exciting thing coming up for us as a church is our next Alpha course. Alpha creates space for people to come and discuss life's biggest questions and ask anything they have to ask. It's been a phenomenally helpful thing in many people's lives to encounter Jesus for themselves. So please do come to that for yourself or invite a friend along. It begins Tuesday the 18th of January and we're hoping that it can go ahead live in person. It'll also be going ahead online. The details to find are highfield.church slash alpha and that's where you can go to book on. That would be a wonderful thing. We'd love to connect with you as well. So in the video description below me right now, there'll be all you need to click a link to come and connect with us, a sort of online connect form to check in with us so we can welcome you and you can let us know how you are doing. For the rest of this service, even if you find yourself at home alone on a sofa, may I invite you to take part, participate by saying out loud any of the words uh, that are printed in bold, Participate by singing along, by having your Bible open, by praying with us. And so I want to begin our time together with these words of blessing that open many of the New Testament letters. Words that remind us at the start of this year that all of our confidence is founded not in ourselves, but in God and what he's like and how he's given himself to us in Jesus. So we begin. Grace mercy and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and also with you. We're going to have our first song, a wonderful way to begin the new year by looking to God, fixing ourselves on him and on his blessing. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome Great thou art, how great thou art. 
I wonder if you've made any New Year's resolutions uh, to start the year. I always find myself struggling to keep them by about January the 4th, something like that. And it is so difficult in our own strength to live the way we know we should. We find ourselves time after time unable to do what we would have anyone else do. We find ourselves time after time doing the things that we know no one should do. So we come now to a time of confession of bringing the reality of our lives before God, not to grovel before him, but to come to him for the forgiveness he offers, to receive it and to be changed. So as we come to the Lord at the start of this new year, let us seek his grace to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom as we confess our sin in penitence and faith. Saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. We began with those words telling us that in Jesus, God gives us his grace, his mercy, and his peace. Forgiveness is our privilege, and it's a day-to-day -day reality for us to receive when we come to God in prayer. So hear these words of assurance. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue our time together with some more worship. Thank you. 
is filled with voices So much noise inside my head And when I'm scared and when I'm feeling all alone All I gotta do is speak your name Say it by day, say it by night Say it till the end of time All I gotta do is speak your name When I wake up in the morning You're my friend throughout the day And when I close my eyes to sleep the night away to do is speak your name. Say it by day, say it by night, say it till the end of time. All I gotta do is speak your name. Say it by day, say it by night, say it till the end of time. All I gotta do This morning is from Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 10. Paul writes, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Year is often a time when we find ourselves taking stock. We often make all kinds of resolutions to become remarkably different people in a short period of time simply by dint of willpower. And they rarely last, honestly, as though we tried to jump off our own shadows and are surprised to find ourselves hitting the ground again. If we're not trying to change ourselves, it's sometimes a time we want to change those around us. Sadly, the new year is often when people start searching for divorce lawyers for sometimes it's easier to change others than to seek to sustain change in ourselves. In the run-up to this Christmas, I was repeatedly struck by just how similar it felt to the previous Christmas. With the threat of new restrictions hanging over us, uh, with the need to keep reviewing what we were doing, what we were planning, Keep, keep making sure that the services and events were as safe as they could be. As safe as they could be while remaining what we hoped they would be. I felt we managed that particularly at Carol's by candlelight. I found it brilliantly moving, being able to sing Christmas carols together. That was different to last year. 
and I confess the emotion of the moment left me momentarily overwhelmed and unable to complete the first verse of O Come All Ye Faithful, our first carol that evening. But in the run-up to Christmas and looking into the new year, everything felt sadly familiar. Everything felt sadly once again very uncertain. And I found myself drawn to this short passage. It came quickly to mind as I was praying about what to say at the beginning of this new year. The beginning of this new year that feels quite like the old one. For it strikes me that Maybe it goes to the heart of how we need to approach this new year, of what living in this new year needs to look like by finding contentment in Jesus. First point, contentment isn't a function of our circumstances. It's not a function of our circumstances. Paul says in verse 11, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. The verb in that phrase, I have learned, is the one from which we get the noun disciple. Paul is saying in a way, the circumstances have discipled me. They have taught me to be content. He carries on, I I know what it is to be in need. And the word there is to be humbled. It's not primarily or wholly about material wealth. It is to be made low. Being made low, Paul tells us, has helped him to learn contentment. Being made low is to take the place of a servant, not a ruler. To accept the discipline of a master, not demand the right to rule ourselves. Perhaps the learning happened through the experience of not having enough. Yet Paul is saying that the circumstances have discipled me. He's saying that being made low has taught him the humility to be content. If Paul knows what it is to be in need, he carries on to say, he also knows what it is to have plenty, verse 12. If the word translated need literally means to be humbled, the word translated plenty literally means to abound. It's a word that describes overflowing. It's a word that's often used to describe a time of great favour, a time of great blessing, anointing and empowerment. Again, Paul's saying that the circumstances, even this time the circumstances of overflowing favour, have discipled me. In both humility and favour, Paul has learned to trust God. Both experiences have discipled him. In both experiences, he's been able to learn and to grow. So contentment doesn't flow directly from our circumstances. Paul's saying that contentment can be found whatever our circumstances. Now, I'm not saying our circumstances have no impact on our well-being, but I am saying that they need not be definitive for us. That's what Paul says. We can find contentment even in being humbled, just as we can find it eludes us even as God is richly blessing our work for him. Our circumstances don't add up simply to contentment. They're not definitive. That's why the capital of therapy in the world is the richest state in the richest country in the world. California isn't famous for contentment. But it is for extravagant wealth. Contentment isn't a function of our circumstances. It can be there in the very hardest times and absent in the easiest times. There when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and absent when we're by still waters and in green pastures. I have walked alongside people, privilege, knowing peace in the midst of acute suffering. And I have sat with people miserable in the midst of plenty. The first weren't knocked off course by their circumstances. Contentment isn't a function of our circumstances. If it's not a function of our circumstances, Paul also tells us second, that contentment isn't a function of what we have. It's not a function of what we have. 
Verse 12, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. If Paul was talking previously about being humbled and being favoured, here he puts it in explicitly material terms. He talks about being content, whether filled or empty, about being contempt, whether having far more than enough or having far from enough. Learning the secret is language taken from the mystery cults of Greek culture. Paul's saying that experiencing plenty and experiencing lack have initiated him into the secret of being content. Both were needed. And he's discovered it's not a function of what we have. Now, very few of us wouldn't want more stuff. Very few very rich people don't want more money. They're all competing at the moment to go into space. We so often want to change something outside ourselves when the lack is so often within. I wonder how many of us changed something significant about our homes during the lockdowns of the last 18 months, changed our environment to help us feel that things actually were changing, that we weren't locked in an everlasting moment. Honestly, it's often displacement activity. We're trying to make ourselves feel better by doing something that feels positive. But Paul tells us that he's known more than enough and he's known far from enough. And he's been content in both situations. He's telling us more isn't better, less isn't necessarily worse. What's key in both is finding contentment beyond our circumstances, beyond our material possessions. So if contentment isn't a function of our circumstances, if contentment isn't a function of what we have, how can we find it? Third point, contentment is found in Jesus' strength. Contentment is found in Jesus' strength. Paul's told us that everything that he's learned through experiencing all these different states, being humbled and being favoured, having far more than enough and having far from enough, all these different states have discipled him. In all of them, he has followed Jesus. In all of them, he's learned that God can be trusted. As he says in verse 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That is, I can be content in all these different states, humbled and favoured, more than enough and far from enough. I can be content in all these different states. I have learned to be content in all these different states because of the presence of the one who empowers me. He's saying in all these situations, I have never been without Christ's strength. In all these situations, I have never been without Christ's presence. In all these situations, I have never been without Christ's peace. That means I can be content. I can be content whatever my circumstances. That means I can be content regardless of how much or how little I have. What's decisive in my circumstances is not my circumstances, but the presence of Jesus. What's definitive in my material state is not what I have, but the strength of Jesus. Verse 13, I can do all this, all this through him who gives me strength. Paul's learned that he can trust God. And that means whatever he faces, However little he has, none of that daunts him. None of that can knock him off course. Paul faces it all as one for whom God's strength and peace and presence are definitive. Definitive and decisive in every situation. Contentment, Paul tells us, isn't a function of our circumstances. Contentment isn't a function of what we have. Contentment is found in the strength God provides. What does this mean for us today? Well, I find these words both challenging and hopeful at the start of this new year. First, because they give us renewed hope that our circumstances need not define us, that we can find God's strength despite them, that we can be discipled and grow through them as Paul was. 
That means that even in COVID times, that means even in the midst of renewed uncertainty and fear, we can be empowered by God. We can know both peace and contentment through the presence of the Holy Spirit. So ask God to show you how he has been discipling you even in these difficult times. Ask God to show you where you're allowing your circumstances to shape you. They warn us, second, not to look to material things for contentment. That what we have doesn't make us content. That having more won't make us more content. But that we can find peace in God's presence. Peace whether we have far more than enough or far from enough. There's something in here, of course, about practicing thanksgiving about disciplining ourselves to notice all the things for which we can thank God and choosing to be grateful for what we do have and not hankering after what we don't or don't yet have. There's something in here also about a renewed commitment to living generously, to serving God with our money, uh, to refusing to allow it to be our master, but making it our slave. Honestly, there's a much greater risk we'll forget God in plenty than in want. And these words invite us, third, to seek after God again, to seek after the one through whom Paul was able to be content, whatever his circumstances, whether humbled or exalted, whether he had far more than enough or far from enough, he was able to be content in Christ. So set aside some time each day this new year, Time to reflect, time to be quiet, time to thank God, to seek his favour, time to, to praise God and to pray for others. Now, it doesn't have to be in a new resolution spirit, 17 hours a day to begin with. Make it 10 to 15 minutes each day, but make it every day and continue to ask God to help you be content, whatever your circumstances, whether you have far more or far from enough, Ask God to give you the strength, the strength, the presence and the peace to be content even in times like these. Now that, I suggest, is a New Year resolution worth pursuing. And not just like all of the others to January the 10th, but throughout this year, not just throughout this year, throughout our lives. That's the way to live in times like this. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Chasing after me, oh. 
miracle separated you hold continue now with an opportunity for us to affirm our faith together, to take our stand, if you like, on the truths which Christians have for centuries held as central and saving. It's a wonderful way for us to begin the new year. So may I invite you to say the words of the Apostles' Creed with me now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Paula is going to lead us in our prayers. Before I lead the prayers, please could you find two household items which we will use later to help us during this time of prayer. God can use the everyday items around us to help us pray. So let us begin a new journey this year of developing our prayer life. Why? Because we are a royal priesthood and the world needs our prayers. So as we enter 2022 and as, a new, as new year resolutions are made, let us ask God to increase our desire to pray and to commit to praying for others throughout the year. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, our sustainer and our help, thank you that we have reached 2022. We know there will be new adventures and times of joy ahead, but also times of frustration and sorrow. Please prepare and equip us to receive all that comes our way with a firm trust and faith in you. May the fruit of your spirit be evident in our responses. We pray for renewed vision and strength for those in church leadership. Anoint and empower leaders afresh with your Holy Spirit and enable them to abide in you. May they know your guiding in every area of leadership. Please give them courage to speak your truth with authority and may it be with a united voice that words of truth and love are spoken into a hurting and weary society. We pray for those with governing responsibilities. Raise up more godly people into these positions of authority and influence. Bless them with godly wisdom and discernment. 
may rules and laws that honour you be established. May those who are blessed with leadership roles lead with compassionate hearts and humility. We pray for those living in temporary shelters and difficult conditions due to conflict and poverty across the world. God be their help, their protector, their provider, their sustainer. Please give national leaders and charity workers wisdom in the use of resources available to them. Bring miraculous provision of food where there is none and where there is sickness, medicine, care and healing. Be God the healer in their midst. Please show us how to respond when we see images of human suffering projected onto our screens and we feel overwhelmed. Now let us turn to the things we have chosen. Holy Spirit, please show us how we can use these items to pray. Maybe you've chosen a food item. Thank God for his provision of food and pray for those who might be hungry because food is not so easily available. Maybe God is prompting you to pray for the teams of people who help the food supply reach our tables. Maybe someone you know has an eating disorder. Pray for them and for those who care for them. Maybe you chose a cup. Pray for opportunities for conversations to be had over a drink, for new friendships to be made. The item I have chosen is a computer mouse. Father, thank you that computers and the internet have been such a blessing for work, education and keeping in contact with others during lockdown and COVID restrictions. But we pray against the harm they can cause and their ability to become idols in our lives. For this, we pray for protection and wisdom in how to use our time wisely. I've also chosen a nurse doll, which reminds me to pray for those who are sick and those caring for them. Almighty God, you sent Jesus to bring healing to a world of sickness. Please sustain those who are sick in body, mind or spirit and restore them to health. Be their hope and light in dark days that joy may return. Give them patience in their difficulties and bring relief from physical and emotional pain. We pray too for the carers, whether paid or voluntary, family member or friend, uphold and sustain them and give them renewed strength and compassion in their caring role. Please use the short time of silence that follows to pray your own prayer. Heavenly Father, may we use the things around us to prompt us to pray for others each day and to pray in alignment with your purposes and your will. May the light and love of Jesus permeate every area of society. Help us to become the people of prayer you have called us to be and may 2022 be a year of unexpected blessing for your glory alone. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. And the coll collect for today. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
whose years never fail and whose mercies are new each returning day. Let the radiance of your spirit renew our lives, warming our hearts and giving light to our minds, that we may pass the coming year in joyful obedience and firm faith. Through him who is the beginning and the end, your Son, Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of life
so much for joining us this morning. If I can remind you, if you are new to us and you'd like to find out more, do click in the link uh, below this video to find out more, to connect with us. And don't forget about Alpha, highfield.church slash Alpha. It'll be an amazing opportunity uh, for many of us, I'm sure, to come close to Jesus with the questions we have. But we finish now with these words of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful week and a happy new year. Thank you.